Good day students, welcome to math.surf.com where we don't just solve, we teach. In this clip we're going to be going over problems 1 to 5 of the August 2019 Algebra 1 New York Regents exam. Alright, in question number 1 we are being assessed on how to generate or write linear models presented in a word problems format. Problem 1 reads, Brian's hockey team is purchasing jerseys. The company charges $250 for a one-time setup fee and $23 for each printed jersey. Which expression represents the total cost of X number of jerseys for the team? All right, to get us started, let's go ahead and write down the formula that's going to um, guide our problem solving process, all right? So when we have a situation like this where we have a base cost and an incremental cost per a certain unit, um, we can use the following formula for generating um, our linear model, okay? So it's basically a linear growth situation, linear growth model. All right, so the formula is as follows. So the function is gonna be, we're gonna see a function f of x is equal to the unit cost, all right? The cost for each additional unit multiplied by x, unit cost times x plus the base cost. All right, so this is the formula that we're going to be using to generate our linear model. Now, if you take a look at this statement that we just read here, can you identify what the unit cost is, the cost for each additional unit? And um, can you tell what the base cost is? is. So let's look at the problem real quick. If we want to start with the unit cost, we're looking at jerseys here. So how much does it say it costs for each jersey printed? So it says $23 for each jersey printed. So each additional jersey is going to be $23 each. All right. So the unit cost is basically $23. All right. And then what is the base cost here? was the starting amounts that you have to have down before you start adding the additional unit cost. Well, you notice it says you have a $250 setup fee. That is the base cost. It's independent of the number of jerseys that um, you want to have printed. All right, so we have everything that we need. We're just gonna put it all together and then we will be able to generate the linear model um, for this particular problem, okay? So using the formula above, the linear model, f of x is going to be the unit cost, which is 23, multiplied by x, the number of units purchased, plus um, the base cost, which is 250, all right? So the expression 23, x plus 250, option number three, is the answer um, to this question, okay? All right, so let's also just put a side note here. X is, in this particular problem, is the number um, of jerseys, number of units, or you can say number of jerseys that are printed. Okay, so that's basically how you generate um, a linear model presented in a word problems format. All right, in question number two, we're going to be assessed on how to identify a function presented in a tabular format. All right, so problem two reads, which table represents a function? So we have um, four tables here and only one of them represents a function. So do you recall how to identify a function um, presented in tabular format? Let's refresh our memory real quick. So you want to recall the following test for functions. All right, so depending on whatever representation you're given, you can determine the right type of test. When you're given a table of formats, um, you have to remember that there has to be no, there are no repetitions, repetitions um, in the X's. Remember what the definition of a function is. It assigns every input to exactly one output. So if you have repetitions in the x's or the inputs, 
you're going to have a scenario where um, the same input is being assigned to multiple outputs, which violates the definition of a function. Alrighty, so since our focus is on the x's or on the inputs, we just focus our attention on the first column, the x column, in the four options that we have presented for us. So let's take a look at table one. Uh, do you see any repetitions in the x's? Absolutely. There's a two going to negative three and a two going to a one. We have the same input going to two different outputs. That is not a function. Okay, we have a repetition here. Uh, option two, they're all the same. One, two, three, four. There can be no repetitions. This has four repetitions. So this has repetitions. So what does that mean? It's not a function, okay? And then option three, negative three, oh, there you go. You have a repetition here. So you have the same input going to two different outputs. So we have repetition. So that's not a function. And option four, negative two, zero, two, four. This one has no repetitions. So what does that mean? That's exactly what we want. It basically means that this table represents a function. Okay? So depending on the representation, there are unique tests that you need to know how to identify functions. But if you're given a table, just focus your attention on the x's and make sure that you have no repetitions um, in the x's. All righty. Let's take a look at question three. In question three, we're going to be looking at how to expand expressions using the distributive property. Question three reads, which expression is equivalent to two times the quantity x squared minus one plus three x times the quantity x minus four? Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and do that. So one thing that you want to remember to keep in mind is anytime you're applying the distributive property, Use an arrow, okay? So an arrow helps you to make sure that you do not forget any term um, when you're distributing, all right? So this two is on the outside. You have two multiplied by this quantity. So that indicates the distributive property. And then here we have three X. Now it's the entire three X that's distributed to the X and the negative four, all right? So we are applying the distributive property here. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, simplify that. 2 times 2x squared is 2x squared. And then 2 times 1 is 2. We're going to apply the same procedure here. 3x times x. Uh, when you're multiplying exponents with the same base, you add the powers, right? So 3x times x is 3x squared because there's a 1 and a 1 here. And then a 1 plus 1 is 2. Alrighty, and then 3x times 4 is 12x. So we're done with the distributive property. Now what we're gonna do um, is simplify. What do I mean by that? We're gonna go ahead and combine like terms. We're looking for terms that have identical degrees and um, variables too. All right, so this is a quadratic. The highest power here is two. So if you look at two x squared and three x squared, those are like terms because they are second degree terms in the variable x. So to combine these two, since they're like terms, all you just do is uh, combine the coefficients. Do not alter the degrees, okay? So 2x plus 3x is 2 plus 3, that's 5. And then you bring the variable component, 5x squared. Nice. Now let's shift our attention to the first degree term, the linear term. This is a quadratic term. The linear term is negative 12x. We know it's linear because it has a power of 1, okay? What can you combine negative 12x with here? There's nothing to be combined with. So we just simply bring it down. And then lastly, we have our nice little constant here, the zero, zeroth degree term. The constant has nothing to combine with, so we just bring it down. Negative 2, 5x squared minus 12x minus 2. The answer to question number three is option number four.
All right, let's take a look at question four. In problem four, we've been assessed on how to solve proportions, okay? A proportion is a statement that two ratios are equal. Uh, so it reads, the value of x that satisfies the equation 4 over 3 equals x plus 10 over 15 is. So let's go ahead and do that. We have 4 over 3 equals um, x plus 10 over 15. So we need to get rid of the fractions, right? So we can use the butterfly method here to get rid of that. It's also known as cross multiplication. So you have the 3 gets multiplied with x plus 10, like that. And then um, the 4 is multiplied by 15. It's called the butterfly method because it looks like a butterfly. Or you could call it a bandage, whichever you want. All right, so let's go ahead and multiply. So you have 4 multiplied by 15 equals 3 multiplied by x plus 10. Notice how I put um, a parenthesis around this term because it has more than one term in it, okay? So let's go ahead and um, solve this resulting equation. We can see how this looks better than this original problem because it has no denominator, no fractional components. 4 times 15 is 60. 60 equals now. We're going to use the distributive property again. So 3 gets distributed to 10. I mean to x and 10. So 3 times x is 3x, and then 3 times 10 is 30. The goal here is to get x isolated. To do that, we're going to carry out two algebraic steps. The first step is to subtract 30 from both sides and then divide by 3. All right, so subtract 30, divide by 3. Let's do it. So subtract 30 from both sides of the equation, and that yields, uh, what does that give us? We have 60 minus 30 is 30 equals 3x. Almost there. Final step to get x isolated. We're just simply going to divide both sides of the equation by what? So we have, I can switch the equation around. 3x equals 30 using the reflexive property of equality. Now, this is multiplication. So to undo multiplication, you do the inverse operation, which is to divide. Okay, so divide, divide, and you have 3x over 3. The 3's divide out. x equals 30 over 3, 10. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the answer to question number 4. Option number 3. All right. For well, question five, we're looking at transformation of quadratics. Um, number five reads, Josh graphed the function f of x equals negative quantity x minus one squared plus two. He then graphed the function g of x equals negative three times the quantity x minus one squared minus five on the same coordinate plane. So we have two um, parabolas, okay? The vertex of g of x is, so um, they basically, we're basically trying to describe the location of g of x relative to f of x. We're looking at the, the um, movement of the vertices from G from F to G. Okay, where is G located relative to F? Alrighty, so think about F as the first one. This is where you start, or the first. And then this is where you stop. G is where you stop, all right? Okay, so before we start with this, let's take a look at the formula that's going to help us to extract the vertices from the two functions. All right, so the formula to find the vertex of a quadratic in vertex form. So if you have f of x equals a times x minus h square plus k, as is the case with these two functions, they are in vertex form. Your vertex is going to be hk, all right? So one thing that you want to remember is that when you're finding the vertex, the number that's grouped with x in the parentheses, you always take the opposite of that. Why? Well, because you notice that 
there is a minus here so that tells you opposite sign all right so the sign is opposite but for the k component uh is the same sign so that's uh, a common mistake that many students make okay all right so keep that in mind now what we're going to do is find the vertices of the two points and then sketch the graph and see how we can find where g is located relative to f so let's start with our first one the starting function which is f of x and that is negative 3 times uh, the quantity x minus 1 squared plus 2 and with this format we can clearly see that the vertex is what what is the vertex here the vertex is um, HK so 1 comma 2 so this is your H right here you see H and that's your K so when you're looking for the vertex remember for the H part you do the opposite right so that's positive 1 and then for the K you just take it the way it is so that's your F the vertex for F and then um, so where you stop the G of X the second one is negative 3 x minus 1 square minus 5 can you tell what the vertex is in this particular problem the vertex is you do the opposite of the number next to the x that's your h 1 and then your k is just this one you don't do any opposite right just take it as it is same sign as indicated here all right so we have the two vertices um right here so do you see how where g of x is located relative to f of x if you it's not obvious to you just make a sketch okay when in doubt graph it out and then you can know exactly what the correct answer is you don't want to take any chances and get the uh, problem wrong so don't forget where you're starting from you're starting from f which is one two so one to the right two up one two so this is the vertex of uh, f of x all right so this is where you start so relative to the starting point where is g g is 1 negative 5 so 1 and go down 1 2 3 4 5 bam right here is negative 5 and this is a 2 so this is g of x this is where you stop so this is the question if you start from f and go to g what's the movement going to be if you lo look at it you notice you're going you're moving um down right you're going down one two three four five six seven so basically g of x is seven units below f of x g of x is seven units below f of x so you need to really pay attention to where the functions are located relative to each other so these are just the vertices if you wanted to graph the actual parabola it's going to look something they're both sad so it's going to look something like this opening downwards and then the other one is going to look something like that all right they're going to be the same size because the only thing that's different is your k value okay all right so answer to problem number five is option number one g of x is seven units below the vertex I mean, the vertex of g of x is 7 units below the vertex of f of x. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Please help support our channel by giving us a, a like or a thumbs up if you found the contents of this presentation helpful um, to your preparation for the Regents exam. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to other math tutorials such as this. If you want to gain access to our entire Algebra 1 course, Algebra 2, Pre-Cal, Calculus, Geometry. Just visit our website at mathcutserve.com. If you have any questions or comments, um, just place it in the comment section below, and we'll be more than glad to support you. Thanks again for watching, and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.